This series is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you for watching, liking, and sharing the videos. Without your support, this wouldn't be possible. Help me make more content by becoming an insider at patreon.com slash Jeremy King. This is Citra, the 3DS emulator, and I have it running on my cell phone, my Android here, uh, running The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. So this is a new beta release that it's an official beta release that uh, Team Citra just released and uh, I thought we'd boot it up and take a look at it. So let's jump right into it and see what this can do. I didn't notice it at the time, but as I was recording that intro where I'm holding the phone, as you just saw, the emulator froze on me. So um, expect things like that to happen. So right off the bat, you can see that this version of Citra for Android is glitched. Uh, it's totally beta. So expect it to run like beta software. And I just want to uh, preface this entire video uh, as a warning that this software is in beta so don't freak out when you download it and try to load a game and it doesn't work because you're not going to have the desktop experience uh, that you're used to with Citra. That being said this is a very interesting uh, milestone for the history of the Semu emulator development. Uh, we're going to be able to see this take off now on on mobile devices and that's really exciting and I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. So that being said I'm going to let run another video that I shot uh, where the intro to The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds runs smoothly and uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the emulator, about the dev team, about the bugs and glitches you can expect, uh, and a few shout outs to the devs because they're doing amazing work. Um, and at this point, I want to tell you that the reason I dove into this today, uh, you know, the announcement was released in the Citra Discord server, and I was pretty excited to see it because I've been hard at work on an HD mod pack for The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. So my personal interest in this, besides general, uh, keeping up with general emulator, uh, developments in the scene is to eventually port my HD mod pack for A Link Between Worlds to the Android version of Citra. So at the current state there isn't support for uh, modified textures and I was speaking with uh, one of the devs in the discord and they told me that currently how the Android version of Citra works uh, it just doesn't allow for it you can't you can't even port over your textures if you did a texture dump in Citra on your desktop I was thinking to myself well and I posed this question well what happens if we port over those textures is it going to uh, what happens if we port over those textures from your desktop version if you've dumped all the textures over what happens if I bring those over to my cell phone and will Citra, the Android version of it, have less uh, frame skipping and stuff like that and stuttering. And the general response was no, at this time that's not possible. So I'm hoping in the future, and I kind of expect it to come eventually, uh, that we are going to have, you know, more uh, texture caching and texture, uh, custom texture support and things like that. But again, this is in beta, so, you know, you can't really expect uh, all that stuff to happen uh, on zero day. But it's really exciting. This is the first official release of the Citra emulator on Android. And um, notable is that there have been a couple other unofficial uh, releases of the emulator over the past few years. So a little bit more about the story of the official release because I find it pretty interesting. So I'm just going to share a little bit of it with you guys as The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds runs on my phone here. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. What I think is really cool here is that the dev team actually brought in one of the devs of the unofficial release of Citra on Android, Sachin Vin. Um, so that totally made sense. You know, bring in somebody who has experience on Android 
flesh out the team experience a little bit more, and that's exactly what they did. So in 2018, Satch and Vin released their port of Citra to Android. And at that point, you know, the community was already clamoring for a few years, especially in Discord, uh, w asking, when is Citra coming to Android? And the response, which they even cover in the FAQ on their Discord server, uh, the question is, do you plan on making an Android app? And the response was, no, not at the moment. Uh, but it seemed like it was an issue of priorities. And once they took care of certain things with a desktop version, they did end up focusing on an Android uh, port of the emulator. And it seems like that they've been doing it for a few years now, just in total secrecy, which is totally cool because it's really fun when things just pop up out of nowhere. So a quote from the blog post on the development, it says, For almost a year, Bunny has helmed this development effort and has pulled other developers into working on this. He figured that since nobody in the core team had any experience with Android development, someone had to start things off somewhere. Development started as a basic app with a front end based off of Dolphin's Android app. Sachin Vin added initial OpenGL ES support. Then the team added the core components of Citra to the app and games were booting and playable but it still had many bugs and issues. And the blog post goes on to explain what those bugs and issues were and who helped here and there. And you know, all the really awesome development stuff that the team worked on to pull it all together. So I'm going to just leave a link to this blog post down below because I'm not gonna read this verbatim, uh, you know, word for word for you guys. Cause if you're interested in the technic, because if you're interested in the technical side of emulators like I am, you're going to want to just read through this and make sense of it for yourself. So with all that said, uh, let's do shout outs to the devs and everybody that actually helped to pull this together because it's really awesome that they have this working. Uh, even if it is pretty glitchy, and again, reminder that this is just beta software at this point and it's going to get better guys. So what works and what doesn't work? The blog post goes on to say the app is still in beta. So while we have tried to squash bugs we've come across, you may still run into the occasional glitch, uh, as I did, as you saw at the very beginning of this video. Uh, if you run into any major problems, please report them to us on Discord or their forum, and we will try to organize them. And that's awesome. They need uh, information like that, guys. So if you do download this, uh, whether it's the desktop or the mobile version of Citra, you know, uh, get those logs and send them to the devs. It just helps make things like this better. The app requires a minimum of 64-bit Android 8, which is Oreo, and OpenGL ES 3.2 support. These are relatively high requirements. However, they allow us to ensure that every device that can run Citra will have a reasonably good experience. As for hardware, we recommend a device with a Snapdragon 835 or better. Your experience may vary greatly depending on the quality of your device's GPU drivers. So uh, yeah, that's about it guys. I'm gonna leave the link to the Google Play Store down below if you wanna download this. Uh, let me know your experience with it. I love to hear uh, from any of you that are playing around with this on your own phone or tablet or whatever Android device you own. Let me know down in the comments. And that is about it for me today, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like my rambling about this topic, uh, give it a big thumbs down. Uh, if you like my content in general, please subscribe. And I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons over at patreon.com slash Jeremy King Tech. Because without them, uh, I would not be able to do videos like this. I would not have the time necessary to do all my mod packs, to do the videos, to uh, administrate the community, or to do the charity fundraising for my local children's hospital uh, through all the Extra Life Twitch streams that I do. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. Uh, to the viewer, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.